So my name is Robin Gallanders. I'm a photographer. I've been interested in photography and practicing photography since about 1970, when I was 18 years old. I became a history teacher for seven years, and then I gave up teaching history to open a photographic studio in Edinburgh and made a reasonable living out of being a commercial photographer. I'd always taken portraits, though, which is what I sort of did for my fine art interest, if I can call it that. So I've always been a portrait photographer, I've always made portraits, and I dare say I always will. I met Finlay in 1995, and somebody had recommended that Finlay was somebody I should make a portrait of, and also that he was looking for a photographer to photograph some of his artworks. So I went down to Little Sparta, I met Finlay, and I photographed this artwork for him. It was a remembrance of Noreen Nydecker. And I was quite lucky because it turned out quite well and he loved it. And he said, I would like you to do some more. I continued to make work for him. And then a year after I met him, I finally plucked up courage to do a portrait of him. Uh, I got him to climb into a tiny rowing boat and row into the center of one of the small lochs. But we were beginning to become quite good friends at this time. And I was beginning to become captivated by the garden and its layers of meaning, its, the idea of its solitariness. I became very influenced by Finlay and his thinking as well. So in 1997-98, I was offered an exhibition at the National Galleries of Scotland. The exhibition was in three parts. It was about the darker side of Finlay's thought, his interest in revolution and warfare. It was about nature, and it was about uh, one of Finlay's particular passions, which was sailing and fishing and boats and so on. So the pictures that are in this edition, take, for example, the Albrecht Dürer tree plaque, all of these pictures have, and all of the works in the garden, uh, although they can be enjoy, enjoyed on a purely aesthetic basis, they can also refer to particular meanings and metaphors, and there's a deeper significance to each of these pictures. So the Albrecht Dürer tree plaque, for example, it is indeed just that, it's a stone plaque with the monogram of Albrecht Dürer on it, as seen in his paintings. And this particular one refers to a painting of Albert Dürer about Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden. So if we look at the print, Mary Nostrum, there's a very large old ash, an enormous structure. And Finlay used to say that, particularly in the summer, when the wind blew, and it often did, of course, at Little Sparta, the sound of the wind in the leaves of the tree sounded like the sea. Mare Nostrum is the Roman notion of our sea, the Mediterranean, in other words. And he placed this plaque high up in, in the tree as a representation of the sea. So when I photographed it, I photographed the plaque and made sure to put the leaves in speckled light way out of focus so that the leaves now look like light dancing on the sea. And similarly with this tablet, this monostitch carved into a block of slate, I think it is, uh, the rowan is learning to write. It's a one-line poem, it's a monostitch, the rowan is learning to write. And of course it's placed in this fairly wooded area where there are rowan trees. And I lit it with quite a hard little flash gun in such a way that the shadows are falling over the Rhone uh, as if the Rhone is writing with the shadows that are falling onto, onto the slate. Order Disorder. This is part of an enormous monumental work. Uh, several huge blocks of stone, each one of which is carved with the present order is the disorder of the future. The interesting thing about this work is that it suggests that you could lift up each of these blocks of stone and rearrange them. You could say the present disorder is the order of the future. And you, you can continue to 
to play around with these blocks of stone to give it different meanings. And continuing on the revolutionary theme, this is the head of Apollo, but actually it's also the head of Saint-Just, the French revolutionary. And he's written Apollo Terrorist in French instead of Apollo Terrorist uh, to make that reference to the French Revolution. It's almost as if you could excavate under the head and you'd find the rest of the, the, rest of the statue. So this is the edition, and each print is an edition of eight. My name is embossed on the front, and on the back is a rubber stamp with the edition number, the medium, who it was printed by, and so on. In fact, they were all printed by me in my darkroom. They're silver gelatin prints, archivally processed. What it means is that each print is going to be slightly different. Finlay has been hugely influential with my, my own practice. I'm very aware of the importance of text and titling and that relationship between the image and the written word and the combination which gives you a third meaning. So the, the photograph has a meaning, the words have meaning, but the two combined together have a, a third meaning.